our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code GOODFELLA1BOXING. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfella since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man. I just caught an interview from a few days ago from Fight Hub where Devin Haney says basically that him and Javier Fortuna is next and that chicken noodle soup Luke Campbell had to wait his turn. Now, if you don't know what was going on, Devin Haney had a shoulder surgery after his tough fight uh, versus the guy he fought on the, uh, the, the YouTube undercard. And, you know, he basically said that his shoulder is good enough to go by March. Um, and start back training, and he's looking to make the fight with Javier Fortuna. So let's talk about the importance of a Javier Fortuna fight, how dangerous it can be even without coming off a shoulder injury. We back, good fellow sports TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Want to make a donation to the channel? That link's in the description. Best way to donate is share, share the video, and uh, salute to Devin. You know what I'm saying? Because it looked like he was trying to slide up out of there, becoming a champion in recess. And what didn't help his cause was Earl Spence. You know, flying through a window and him not electing to be champion in recess and Devin kind of doing it kind of fast. So Devin came back. He said the doctor said they good to go and I guess start training in March. So, you know, basically the the purse bid between Luke Campbell and Hybrid Fortuna, if this is true, it's going to have to stop. And then they're going to have to negotiate with Fortuna and Devin Haney. I don't think Premier Boxing Champion is going to put money behind Fortuna. So I think Fortuna is going to go to the zone. Now, also, there was an offer that was supposed to be in place to bring Fortuna to the zone to fight Devin Haney to avoid the mandatory purse bid for the WBC title that Devin Haney holds. But the zone didn't approve the money that Eddie Hearn was going to get at Fortuna, and they offered something else lower. So then they was going to go to purse bid, and then it was going to go that way. So I'm not sure if the zone going to put that money back up there. But Devin did tell Marco from Fight Hub, and I'll link that interview in the description of the source link, that it's important. He said this fight is very important to give the fans a solid fighter on his resume and gauge how good he is. Now, Javante could have fought for Tuna. At, I think it was at 130, and uh, somebody, Abner Morris, fell out. He refused to fight for Tuna. For Tuna is a tough, awkward fighter. He gave Granados a, a tough fight before he fell out the ring. He gave Robert Jr. a tough fight, you know, before he got a questionable loss. Some people call it a robbery, but it was a close fight. So, for Tuna, real awkward. He, if you watch Jezreel Corrales and Colbert yesterday, that's the type of fight that Devin Haney about to be in. Uh, Fortuna is real awkward. Um, he hold the only difference is Fortuna don't switch to righty to lefty like Corrales, but that's the type of education he about to get. The difference is Devin Haney got a WBC belt and Colbert won a regular interim WBA belt. Um, so that's the difference. But he about to get the same education that Colbert got yesterday on how to fight a guy that's tricky, that's awkward, that hold. And Fortuna is a little bit more offensive than Corrales. He leads off, you know, with looping shots, wide shots, clubbing shots. And Fortuna, you know, Fortuna is a dog. If you let Fortuna dictate, you know, uh, the pace and walk around the ring and jump in and do what he want to do, you got to you gotta stick that jab down Fortuna's uh, throat, force Fortuna to go back, and you got to time Fortuna with quick, straight shots in between his wide looping shots. And then once you're able – to not let Fortuna hold you, you can walk him down. And what Cobra learned yesterday in the middle of the fight, and I know he got a good corner, and I know Devin got a good corner, was he started creating space with the forearm. You know what I'm saying? He started shoving him with the shoulder. And that might be de de dangerous for Devin coming off a of shoulder surgery where he has some micro tears in there, I think he said. But, you know, I was watching uh, James Tony talk to Caleb Plant about that. When you in a clinch, when you able to use your shoulder to create space, and McGregor did it yesterday with Cowboy Cerrone. He created space with his shoulder and created separation. And eventually that opened up some things for him to score that high kick knock knockout of Cerrone. But like I said before, you know, you can create that, that, that space with that shoulder and punch off the clinch. And there's ways to really create space on the inside and inside fighting is, you know, it's, it's learned. You know, and uh, I think Devin Haney is going to get a lesson from inside fighting, from fighting Javier Fortuna. If he wants to be successful in that type of way, but Fortuna is an awkward guy. It's a tough fight. It's a great litmus test. This would be the best fight. This would be the test where we see if Devin Haney is really good or he still got some things to really work on. But Fortuna, tough guy, man. It's a fight I definitely want to see. It's a lot better than Luke Campbell and Fortuna. I think it's a lot better than any other fight he had, Menard or Santiago or whoever else he fought. This is a real fight. 
you know, right now it's all speculation if Devin Haney is, you know, the heir apparent to Mayweather or the truth. It's speculation for Tank. It's speculation for Stevenson. It's speculation for Ennis. Gary and Tom Russell. It's a lot of speculation. And it's going to be guys that y'all see, that y'all don't see, that's going to uh, that's going to rise up and, and be up there with them that we don't account for right now. Somebody hitting the bag that don't have a big promoter like Crawford. Somebody hitting the bag that you don't see that's getting a late start like Sergio Martinez or like Deontay Wilder. You, you're going to see those guys, you know. And some of these guys that y'all think is, is the Goods, the Garcias, the Cobras, the Stevensons, the Ennises, the Du Bois, the FN Jobway, about 50% of them, they're going to lose. Y'all going to knock them off of being overrated. Somebody going to bump their head and get a loss and come back and be even better. So this is the beginning of, you know, Devin, Devin Haney, you know, campaign to be the best. This is his best test right there. And for Tuna, he ain't no easy fight. A lot of head button, a lot of holding, a lot of elbowing, you know, tough grappy, you know, scrappy dude. So how do you fight him? You know what? You 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 don't give him no space. Either you sit back and you time him, or you you walk him down, don't give him no space, and push him on the back foot. See, for Tuna and Corrales, they can't fight for for twelve rounds, three minutes. They can't fight for thirty six minutes. They fight in spurts. So if you step up the pace and force them to fight for 36 minutes, they ain't gonna last the full 12 rounds. They, 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 they like to pace themselves. So you know he got Mike McCullum in this corner as well in Devin Haney. So he should be ready on the inside, ripping a lot of body shots. I wouldn't even look to go for tuna head a lot. I look to rip that body, take them legs. You make him a stationary target. It's over with. It's over with. You look to rip that body, rip it to the head, and then he gonna be out of there. Devin is in, a, in, in better shape. Devin is a better athlete, but Devin don't have the experience. That's the problem. See, a lot of these dudes, they got the skills. And they really don't know where their holes at yet. So Fortuna is going to, you know, expose some holes in Devin's game. And, and Devin to see where he need to really, you know, touch up at. But, you know, as far as Fortuna, either you got to sit back, you got to time Fortuna, or you got to stay on Fortuna and step the pace up. And he probably going to get out of there. If you step the pace on for Tuna and you got and you got some success in there, but like I said before, you got to commend Devin Haney because he easily could have let Luke Campbell deal with it, or then came back and got the winner uh, later in the year and took a Tuna fight. But I think a lot of people have some speculations because it was hella it was hella fast how he became champion in recess. Then you know when Fortuna was the topic of conversation, so I think he really want that smoke. But if he ain't one hundred percent healthy, this ain't the fight to do it in with a shoulder because Fortuna gonna pull you. Pertuna going to hold you. He going to lock your arm up and beat you with the free arm. He going to get he going to get a whole lesson on awkward fighting one on one. But the thing about it is, you see Emmanuel Augustus gave Floyd some issues. You see Corrales gave Cobra some issues. Fortuna gave Easter some issues. You don't see a lot of awkward dudes on this level. Mayorga gave Vernon Ford some issues. These awkward guys are usually like former champions, journeymen. They tough fighters. They just missing some. Edison, Edison Miranda gave war some issues. No awkward type of loopy guys, but they good to fight against to, to, to kind of gauge where you at. They touch your, they test your chin. They test your stamina. They test your physical strength as a man, and they test if you really want it. If you one of them dudes that that don't take boxing serious, or you one of them dudes that 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 soft and ain't got no heart, a Corrales, a Fortuna, a Miranda. They they going they gonna test your heart. So you going for the Devin gonna get a test. No doubt in my mind. Fortuna gonna be tough, but I expect him he just too he too sharp to lose that fight. Unless he get injured, unless he stop he get stopped like Vitaly with a shoulder injury or something like that. He too sharp. Too sharp, too skilled, too fast, but you know, the year to upset, I don't think anybody ever ruled it out. You know, with you know what happened with Rosario and Andy Ruiz last year and John Pascal, you know what I'm saying? So, like I said, man, this is a good fight for Devin. It's a fight where we finally can see him actually step up. I think he heard the, the fans kind of saying it kind of looks fishy. Earl flopped through a window, got his title. He hurt his shoulder, and all of a sudden, he duck, you know, he gave up his title and, and left for Tuna to fight somebody else. So, I think he heard us, um, you know, and I think he want to make good. So, hopefully it's a shining moment. I know his dad and, and Mike McCullough are going to get him ready for this one. 
He gonna need some body snatching type skills though, man, for sure for this one. But hey, it's a good fella sports TV. Let me know what you guys think. I link the Fight Hub interview in the description or the source link. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out to the email if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? That link's in the description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. And let me know, man, what y'all think about a possible Haney and Fortuna matchup. Who you rolling with? How you see it going? Appreciate the love, support. One time for the one time we gone.